is the new entry-level phone from Samsung, the Galaxy AO4S. With budget phones, it's hard to be too picky, but even so, what is the Galaxy AO4S able to bring to the table? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out in our full review. The Galaxy AO4S is pretty much the lowest tier model offered by Samsung this year. You won't find competitive specs here, but there is a large battery, so at least it should have battery life going for it. The AO4S has a plastic unibody design. The back is glossy and a bit of a fingerprint magnet. The phone feels a bit large in the hand, maybe because of the rounded sides, but overall it provides a decently comfortable grip. On the front is a 6.5 inch LCD screen with a 720p resolution and a teardrop shaped notch. An upgrade over last year is that you get a 90Hz refresh rate too. The high refresh rate is nice to have, especially at this price. And you can dial down to 60Hz to save energy too. But despite that, this display's resolution gives away its budget nature. At 270 ppi, content isn't as sharp here as on a 1080p screen, which you can find on some competitors. The color accuracy isn't too bad, though whites are a bit on the bluish side, and there aren't any options to tweak the colors and settings. When it comes to brightness, the Galaxy AO4S was able to achieve just 390 nits maximum, and there's no brightness boost available on top of that. It's actually quite a bit less than last year's model. For audio, there's a 3.5mm jack for headphones and a single bottom firing speaker. The speaker earned an average score in our loudness test, and its sound quality isn't great. There's distortion at higher volumes and hardly any bass. You can wake up and unlock the Galaxy AO4S with a side-mounted fingerprint reader built into the power button. It's really fast and accurate. And you can get the phone with 32, 64, or 128 gigs of storage on board, and that's expandable through microSD. But most apps will keep their data on the phone's main storage, so we recommend going for at least 64 gigs. The Samsung software experience is one reason to go for this phone over similarly priced competitors. It runs One UI Core 4.1, based on Android 12. It's a straightforward interface, with plenty of customizations over what you'd see on stock Android. One UI Core brings most of the features you'd find on Samsung's more expensive devices. You are missing some things like Bixby and Samsung Pay, but the main ones are all here. The main issue is that this interface is probably a bit too resource heavy for this sort of hardware. We often experience slowdowns and stutters, even when doing some relatively low key tasks. What the Galaxy AO4S packs under the hood is an Exynos 850 chipset. It's Samsung made and built on an 8 nanometer process. In benchmarks, the phone sits near the bottom of the charts, even falling behind other phones in this class. The GPU performance isn't great, but where the AO4S stumbles is in the CPU department, and that's what leads to those slowdowns when going about your daily business. Like I mentioned before, the Galaxy AO4S is pretty good when it comes to battery life. It has a 5000 mAh battery and was able to earn an endurance rating of 114 hours in our proprietary tests. Charging, on the other hand, is a bit disappointing. The phone supports 15 watt charging, but doesn't come with an adapter in the box. But even with a Samsung charger, we were only able to charge the AO4S from 0 to 28% in half an hour. The Galaxy AO4S has three cameras on the back, but you can argue that only the 50 megapixel main cam is very useful. The others include a 2 megapixel macro camera and a depth sensor. The main cam saves photos at 12.5 megapixels, and if there's plenty of light, the performance is solid. The AO4S punches above its weight class here, delivering good sharpness and detail, true-to-life colors, low noise, and nice dynamic range. Portraits are sharp and detailed, and offer good color saturation. The edge detection around the subject is decent too, if the scene isn't too complex. 2 megapixel photos from the macro cam aren't great. You just can't expect too much detail at this resolution, and the contrast and colors leave more to be desired. In low light, photos from the main cam are okay considering the price of this phone. The photos have a good overall exposure, and there's a decent amount of detail. The contrast and colors are alright, but highlights come out clipped. There doesn't seem to be any HDR going on here, nor is there a night mode. Selfies come from the 5 megapixel front facing cam, and there are two choices for the field of view, a normal mode and a cropped in one. Either way, the photos are decent for a low end phone, colors are lively, and you get good sharpness if there's enough light. The dynamic range is okay for the most part. Videos can be captured in up to 1080p resolution at 30fps. The footage from the main cam is good, with adequate dynamic range, accurate colors, and okay sharpness for 1080p. 
So that's the Samsung Galaxy AO4S. We didn't expect a whole lot from an entry-level phone, but what you do get here is a high refresh rate on the display, solid battery life, a decent camera, and Samsung software. The problem with the software though is that while you do get a feature-packed interface, the phone struggles to run those features smoothly because of its low-powered chipset. What's the point of having an extra smooth display if there's going to be lag anyway? So in the end, the Galaxy AO4S is an okay phone considering the price, but there are better options out there. Thanks for watching guys, and see you on the next one.